Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Got a story here sent to me by a whole bunch of people. It reminds me of something that happened to me that I did a video about a couple years ago. So if you are new to the channel or don't know what I'm talking about, stick around. I'll explain the story and how you can find that video. But something similar to this, but different, with a different outcome, uh, happened. But here we go. Artnews.com sent to me by a whole bunch of people. Tessa Solomon wrote it. An elderly couple sold an African mask to an antiques dealer. For $157, it sold at auction for several million dollars. Now they want a slice of that. And the question is, are they entitled to it legally, morally, or are they just out of luck? An elderly couple in France, this happened in France, has accused an antique dealer of cheating them out of a seven-figure payout after learning that the African mask they sold him uh, was sold at auction for $4.4 million, or 4.2 million euro. According to Le Monde, which first reported the news, the unnamed couple has launched a lawsuit against the dealer asking an appeals court in France to determine what compensation is owed to them. Now, they discovered the mask while they cleaned out their property in preparation for a garage sale. The mask was put aside for the local antiques dealer who agreed to buy it for 150 euros. That was back in September of 21. Months later, they read in the newspaper the mask had been sold for several million dollars at an auction house in France. According to that listing, it was a traditional fang mask used in weddings, funerals, and other rituals. The mask uh, is a rare sight out of Africa, with less than a dozen held in museums worldwide, was brought to France by the man's grandfather, who had been a colonial governor in Africa. Now, the lawsuit's ongoing. They recently won a court battle where an appeals court decided in June that their claim appears to be well-founded in principle and ordered the proceeds of the auction sale to be frozen until the conclusion of the case. So the court has said, we think there's enough merit here to at least freeze the sale assets to see what's going to happen. The argument of the couple is based on the belief that the dealer withheld his suspicions over the true value of the artifact. Rather than display the mask in his own shop, he contacted auction houses in France for an estimate. Uh, several he contacted said it was probably not worth much, but one was a specialist in African artifacts, which had the mask analyzed using carbon-14 dating and mass spectrometry. The tests dated the mask to the 19th century, and an ethnologist expert, after having a look, said it was used by one tribe, uh, which was a secret society within the Fang people who oversaw judicial matters. The auction house listed the mask for sale with an estimate of between 300,000 and 400,000 euros, but it sold for more than a million. Uh, it sold in March of 2022 uh, for quite a bit of money. Now, faced with potential legal proceedings, the antiquities dealer then offered the couple about $315,000 in compensation However, the court documents reviewed by Artnet News reveal the offer is rejected due to now opposition from the couple's children who have said, we think our parents were ripped off. A judicial court granted them a protective seizure of the proceeds of the sale, which was carried out in May of 2022. That move was reversed by a lower court, and the money was returned to the dealer, but then it was frozen again. It's all under review right now at a higher court, and we'll see what happens. Point is, that they went to an art dealer and said, hey, we got this old mask. Is it worth anything? The guy goes, yeah, it's worth 157 bucks." They sold it to him. He turns around, takes it to an auction, and he sells it for over a million euros. And uh, they find that out, and they're like, hey, the guy ripped us off. Now, I can't speak to French law, but I can talk about generally what happens in the U.S. And this is a situation that, as you might imagine, happens quite a bit. Someone walks into a dealership of some sort and says, we got something of value. And the dealer says, oh, it's worth this much. They take it in on trade or they, they buy it. Uh, and um, you find out later they sold it for a huge chunk of money. First of all, the real question is, what is fair? What is fair? So if a dealer or a dealership can sell something for $10,000, do they give you $9,999 for it and they make $1 profit? Of course not. Do they give you 6000 and they make four? I'm sure if you've watched Pawn Stars, you know they often discuss this and they'll say, look, if it's worth $20,000 retail, we're going to give you 10, maybe 12. 
but we've got to keep the lights on, pay overhead. We don't know if it's going to sell for that. We're taking a risk here. How do you monetize risk? And so it's difficult to say. But the real question is, let's assume for a moment that the dealer knew, and, and it sounds like it was not that easy to figure out, but let's assume the dealer actually knew this thing was worth millions. And he says, I'll give you a couple hundred bucks for it. Is that illegal? Or is that simply unethical, immoral? And so there are laws involving fraud and misrepresentation and silent misrepresentation. And so you're probably looking at those unless there's a statute specifically on point in your state. And I'm not familiar with any statutes on point on this. However, uh, if somebody knew Let's assume for a moment that they actually knew we could prove that. And by the way, I understand that's a proof issue, but let's assume they could actually prove that. We can prove that they knew and they didn't say anything. Well, fraud is when someone makes a statement that's false and you rely upon it to your detriment and get hurt and they benefit. Well, they didn't say anything. That can't be fraud, right? Silent fraud? Well, it's actually silent misrepresentation. Silent misrepresentation is where somebody remains silent in a transaction when they should have spoken up. They knew that they had information that the other side wanted to know. But also, and here's the thing, a lot of courts are going to still look at that and go, this is different. Because let's suppose that I'm the elderly couple and I'm selling the mask to you. And you look at it and go, hey, this thing's worth like a million dollars. It's worth a million dollars. And I kind of hint that I might know that, but I'm not quite sure. But deep down, I know it's not. It's a fake. I know it's a fake. Let's assume I had all those tests done and they came back fake. And so you're looking at the mask going, I think this might be worth some money. And I'm like, found it upstairs. Okay, I'll give you 100 grand for it. Okay. And it turns out I knew the entire time. There's no question that the misrepresentation is going to stick there because I'm selling it to you. I benefit directly from that. And that's the most common type of silent misrepresentation you hear about where somebody who is selling something or trying to get someone to enter into contract to not say what they know. Now, it's reversed here because it's a buyer, but also the buyer suspected it, but did he know? And so the real question is, if he suspected it, should he have told them that? Should he have said, I suspect this might be worth more money? How about this? Let me take a look at it, and, and if we can find out it's worth more money, we'll work something out. But it looks like instead he just said, look, I'll give you 150 bucks for it. And that's how it went. So I've got to tell you, and, and I'm not going to tell the whole story now because it's in a video that I'll put a link to in the description below, that I found while metal detecting a Civil War belt buckle that I suspected was fake because of the fact that it's a commonly faked belt buckle. But where I found it made me think that it could be real. And so I contacted a bunch of experts, and the first few I talked to said, no, that's fake. It's obviously fake. And then I talked to a guy who goes, no, that's real. And I go, how do you know? And I'd sent him really, really good digital photographs. And he goes, I can tell by the photographs. And I've seen those before. And mine was what they called dug, D-U-G. I dug it out of the ground. It had been in the ground for the last 100 years. He goes, that has what they call ground action, the corrosion, that cannot be faked. So somebody would have had to fake that belt buckle 50 or 100 years ago and bury it and dig it up now to make it look like that. He says, I think it's real. I go, what's it worth? And he goes, eighteen dollars to $20,000. Now, here's the thing. I know what he sold it for. He sold it for, I believe, $18,000. And he goes, I'll buy it from you for sixteen, and I'll sell it. Or you can consign it to me, and I get 10% consignment fee. What do you want to do? And... I said, wait, you'll pay me $16,000, like U.S. dollars, like actual, like, like actual money money? He goes, yes. I go, dude, it's yours. <laughs> I'll sell that to you. Now, if he had said to me, Steve, I'm not sure if it's real. I'll give you $1,000 for it. I would have jumped on that like a loose ball in the end zone. $1,000 for something I dug out of the ground yesterday? Really? But the guy actually said, no, here is what it's worth. Here's what I can sell it for. And he was right because he, he sold it. He didn't sell it right away, but he sold it relatively soon afterwards. And so the guy was honest with me. 
And I've had people remark on that, and I agree, that's the remarkable part of the story. It's not that I found this Civil War belt buckle in the North <laughs> a long time after the war ended. That's not the remarkable part. The remarkable part is that after speaking to several people, go, it's fake, it's fake, it's fake, I kept at it and found a guy who goes, no, not only is it real, I'll pay you $16,000 for it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to let you pay me that money. So my story had a better ending than this one because it didn't involve protracted litigation in France. But <laughs> maybe if you're in France, protracted litigation ain't that big of a deal. But I'm glad I wasn't involved in that. So like I said, if you're interested in that story, check out the video in the description below here. But as of right now, the elderly couple in France who sold their African mask to an antiques dealer for 157 bucks. Uh, and, of course, that's all in euros, but I'm translating that or converting that. Uh, it was sold for millions, and now they want a slice of that. And the question is, how much are they entitled to? And, again, in France, I don't know if they have a concept of misrepresentation or silent misrepresentation, uh, but we'll find out. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. I've been in big trouble. I don't have to look for it on a map. It always finds me.